together growing in faith, changing communities. Together, growing in faith, changing communities. My dear brothers and sisters, today I would like us to reflect on the Gospel of Luke chapter 9, verse 28 to verse 36. At that time, as Jesus was going to the mountain, as he was going to a desert, as he was going to a lonely place, he was coming to a place where he was to meet God. He was coming to a place where he was to find himself. He was coming to a place where he was to, to fight his own demons, to, to struggle with himself. He says, I want to go. I need to come out. I need to take time out and to deal with me. And to deal with myself outside of the busy life. And I think we need that in our lives. We need time out from the busy schedules. We need time out from the business of life, the noise of the kids, the competition at work, the frustration of life, the inability to pay the bills. Because, dear brothers and sisters, I can have wealth. I can have big cars, I can have beautiful, luxurious houses and homes, but if I don't have good health, if I don't have a good relationship with God, that all is a waste. And so the first thing, we all need time out to be with God, but we also need time out to be by ourselves and to deal with ourselves. But in the process of doing that, Jesus takes Peter, James, and John. And he says to them, I need you to come with me. I need you to accompany me. I need you to journey with me into the unknown. Do you have something like that? Do you have people that you can rely on? I call them prayer warriors. I call them spiritual companions. I call them prayer mentors or prayer guides. The people who could get up in the middle of the night and pray with you and for you. People who could carry you when you can no longer carry yourself. People who could see the pain through your smile. People who don't want to know the stories, they just need to know they can talk to God on your behalf. People who are not going out there to pry in your personal and private life, but people who want to know that there's something of God inside of you. Do I have the ability, do I have the humility to ask for help? There's a great temptation in most of us in life where I think I'm okay, where I think I can do it on my own, where I think I don't need anybody else. And in every spiritual growth, we always somehow need a guide. We always somehow need that star that leads us to the truth. So the first one, am I willing to go out and take time out and be by myself with God? The second one, do I have people that I can call on, that I know that they can pray with me and for me? The third one, do I have the humility to ask for help? But also, as we go out to the mountain, as Jesus went out to the mountain, then he prayed. 
spoke to God and he allowed God to speak to him. Am I open to, to listen to God? To listen to his word in the scriptures, in the events of our lives, in our struggles, in our failures, even in our mistakes. Can I listen to God? And what is it that God is asking of us today? What is it that God is demanding of my life today? I'm one of those who believes that we need to grow where we are planted. That God has placed us in a particular place, in time, for a particular reason and purpose. So I need to ask myself, am I growing? Am I becoming that which God wants me to become? Sometimes the soil may not be conducive, but the seed may be so great. And so a lot of work needs to be put into the soil in order that I grow and become that which God wants me to be. What then do I do with the soil? There are two things that we can do. Either we can nurture the soil and try and work with it so that we can bear fruits or we can change the soil. And I want to talk about the concept of the soil pertaining to the people in our lives. Are you helping me to grow? Are you helping me to achieve my greatest goals in life? Because if you're not, I shouldn't be spending much time with people who do not challenge me. I shouldn't be spending much time with people who can see greatness beyond my faults, my mistakes, and my weaknesses. The fourth point that speaks to me as Jesus was in the mountain praying, his appearance, his face changed. Am I changing? Am I transforming? Am I becoming better than what I was in the past? Which aspect of my life has changed? Has it changed for good, for better, or for worse? Having met you, having been in a relationship with you, having met, been married to you, having worked in this firm, have I become a better person? Or have I become bitter, angry, full of hatred? No one is stagnant in life. Either we are growing or we are regressing. But we know the truth because we live our lives. The fifth point that speaks to me absolutely profoundly. As Jesus goes out and is in the mountain, two great figures come and meet him. And these two great figures are Moses and Elijah. Moses represents the prophets and the writings, the Torah. And obviously Elijah is the greatest prophet. But there are certain truths that we can pick up from here. As often as we try to become great, as often as we try to move on in life, there will always be things from the past that have a way of coming back either to haunt us or to affirm us. Which leads me to an important point. Have I learned to embrace the past? Have I learned to forgive the mistakes, the sins of my youth? If the past was to catch up with me, how would I be able to deal with it? Will I run away or will I embrace it and ask for the wisdom of God to grow from those mistakes? And as Jesus sits with Moses and Elijah, Peter speaks beautiful words. 
It is good for us to be here. It is good for us to stay in this environment. And Jesus says to him, in as much as it is good, it is not good for our growth. And my dear brothers and sisters, this is quite important for me. Nobody, nobody grows in the comfort zone. If you are comfortable in your life, if nothing challenges you in your life, at your work, at home, in your relationships, the rest assured, you are not growing. Do not be afraid of hard times. Do not be afraid of challenges. Do not be afraid of crucial conversations. Do not be afraid of facing your own fears. Do not be afraid of tackling the white big elephant in the room. It is only when you can have crucial conversation. It is only when you can disagree. It is only when you can argue the point that wise and matured people come out better. And so Jesus says, it is good that we hear, but it's even far more greater if we can move out of this and face the reality. And so the question that I want to leave you with, what are the realities of your own life? What are the challenges in your own life? What are the challenges at work, at home, in your marriages, in your personal life? Don't run away from them. Face them. Look at them in the eye and say these words. The God in me is greater than anything outside in the world. May the Virgin Mother of God continue to be with us, to protect, to bless, and to guide us. The Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen.